Hi, my name is John Garfield. This is the Releasing Kings newsletter. It's May 4th, 2014. I want to talk to you about uh, coming out of the crab pot and into the kingdom. <laughs> One of the hallmarks of transitioning into a kingdom mentality is switching our identity from servant to friend or king. Obedience and servants do not really define the heart of Christianity. The gospel of the kingdom is an invitation to be the friend of Jesus and to rule and reign with him as a king. John 15, verse 15, I no longer call you servants, but a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. So the realization that God has written his desires in our hearts so that we recognize them as our own is a life-changing dynamic in our relationship with God. The next thing that happens is that the veil is pulled back and we can see that God has written something precious on the hearts of other people as well and that they are not just servants either. These are the two natural consequences of that revelation. Number one, what's your dream? The first consequence is I naturally want to hear the dream or desire that is in your heart. I can imagine that it is prophetic and, and sacred and points toward your metron and destiny. I will always encourage you to move in the direction of your dream instead of trying to persuade you to convert to my dream or deploy any of my initiatives. The second thing is, what can I do to help you take the next step? <laughs> the second dynamic is that I clearly understand how the kingdom is built when others see their dream come true. I may have a role in helping you achieve your success. I already know that's what the Father's doing, and it's in my heart to do the very same thing. So let's talk about the servant culture. There's a tendency in all of us to want to remain subordinate and promote others to be kings, letting them rule over us. We're fearful of our own promotion and fearful of getting left behind at the same time. <laughs> we find a bizarre security if everyone is equally mediocre. A servant identity is promoted in communism, most world religions, and traditional management theory governing the workplace. When a group of people regard themselves as servants in a hierarchy, the result is always competition for the limited positions within the hierarchy and a level of corruption to gain the favor required to get those promotions. Bribery and manipulation are common ingredients in totalitarian governments, and a slightly milder form can be seen in most religious and corporate hierarchies. The servant majority resent the promotion of their fellow servants because that promotion comes through a level of favoritism which eliminates one more opportunity for their own success. The motto is, if they can't, if I can't have it, you can't either. <laughs> it's like a crab pot. If someone tries to get out of the pot, there's always another crab leg pulling him back into the lifestyle of poverty. The crab mentality has roots in a kingdom of darkness. And if you look on, under crab mentality uh, in the internet, it's a uh, well-documented <laughs> phenomenon. I put a great graphic in the uh, newsletter as well. Psalm 20, verse 4. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. We will shout for joy when you are victorious and will lift our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant you all your requests. That's the heart of God toward you and I. We will shout for joy when you are victorious. That's kingdom. So let's talk about the kingdom culture. It's remarkably different in the way it feels and works. The organizational structure is very flat. Jesus is the leader and his spirit resides in the heart of every believer. His voice can be heard by every believer, including most unbelievers. <laughs> his sheep do hear his voice, but the minute we do hear, we transition to sons and kings operating in a level of wisdom and revelation that no longer fits the sheep analogy. We become warriors in his army, sons in his family, members of his household, kings in his kingdom. Jesus came to get us out of the crab pot. <laughs> John 10 verse 10, I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. 
And Genesis 12, 2 and 3 is the Abrahamic covenant. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. That does not fit a servant. <laughs> Sorry. And it says you will be a blessing. In other words, God is making our names great so that we're in a position to bless the nations. That's the goal of the kingdom. Kingdom leadership raises the identity of others from servant to king and helps to make a connection with the motivations already within their own heart that were put there by God, as opposed to issuing dictates and expecting obedience. Kingdom leaders understand that people may resist becoming kings. They are fearful of coming out of the shadows of servanthood to become themselves and possess their land, and they're also fearful of being left behind if they don't do it. Kingdom leaders also understand that nothing can be built on a foundation of servants who are not motivated from within the desires of their own heart. So there are a couple of practical ramifications. Let's consider those um, when we, in terms of treating people like kings instead of servants. What does that look like? Well, in the marketing area, we all have dreams and visions, and we all need help from others in order to achieve the destiny that God designed in our hearts. Because we're all like recovering addicts from a servant culture and a hierarchy, we tend to sell others on our own dreams and plans and products instead of taking the time to listen to what God has written on their heart. The worst marketing tendency is that we expect others to fund our dreams instead of learning to create the value and wealth to manage our own cash flow. Taxes and offerings are not how uh, dreams are funded for kings. The second is management. Leaders in a production environment always have a full slate of activities and a short schedule in which to get them done. Managers from a servant culture are so busy passing out assignments that they miss what motivates their staff and eventually lose them. Kingdom leaders make it a priority to hear the hearts first and to help people turn ordinary work into a ministry that has a kingdom purpose. They help people become themselves instead of just conforming to the corporate mold. The third area is, and this is a surprising one, is evangelism. When Jesus is lifted up in the various mountains of our culture, the kingdom has incredible drawing power. People are already wired with a hunger for the desires that God put in their heart. They are not, we are not negating sin and the cross, but we are helping people experience the goodness of God that draws them to, the, to repentance. That goodness is specifically that in Christ we can be ourselves. God has an amazing way of resurrecting our past and making something beautiful out of our heritage, out of our experiences, out of our businesses, and out of our lives, even though they may have been broken. We are all hungry for the level of purpose and results that kingdom brings. It's the good news of the gospel. And we're called and chosen to bear fruit. We're also called to serve. I'm not arguing that point. It's just that we don't serve others from an identity of servant. Let me explain. If I serve others from an identity of a servant, I will subject myself to their dream and give them my time and money out of a sense of sacrificial obedience that my heart secretly opposes. That's the definition of religion in the sense of dead works. It separates people from their hearts and it's toxic spiritually and psychologically. Worse yet, if I do become a leader out of a servant mentality, I'm predisposed to be a heartless autocratic tyrant. It might work in the Politburo of Mother Russia, but not in the kingdom of God. If I serve others out of a kingly personal identity, I release people into their own dream. I'm not threatened by their success because I understand that the, in the kingdom we need everyone to be successful in reaching their dreams that God placed in their heart. I sincerely desire the promotion of my brothers and sisters and I'm willing to help them and I'm having fun doing it. <laughs> to those around me, this kind of serving feels like being loved. And the frosting on the cake, they love me back. When you release another person's heart to achieve their kingdom destiny, you make a friend for life. It's a party out there, and I want to invite you to join the kingdom. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next time.